What makes a great phone case? Now everyone has their preference, some like bulky, strong, and damn near bulletproof, while others like sleek and stylish. For me, well, I'm usually a caseless type of guy, but for the past two years when I have had a case on my phone, it's been this one, the Light Chaser Pro by Polar Pro. Now I think we all can agree that the iPhone already has an amazing camera by itself, but similar to a basic cinema camera with a lens on it, there are going to be situations where it'd be nice to add something a little extra to the character of the image. Now right before we jump into this video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that red subscribe button, it helps me out way more than you know. Huge thanks to today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound, more on them in a few minutes. So let's look at the setup. Of course, we're starting with my iPhone 13 Pro Max, adding on the Light Chaser Pro case, the grip handle, the Bluetooth shutter to go on the handle, a whole new lineup of filters, and for a little extra stabilization, I'm throwing it all on the Zion Crane M3. If you're interested in learning more about the gimbal, check out the card above. I made a video on it a couple weeks ago. Let's talk about the case. Now, the first thing is the price. Now, when I first got my iPhone, I knew that I wanted this new Light Chaser Pro whenever it was going to come out, but since my kids do play with my phone I needed something at least on the phone and so I bought Apple's stupid silicone case in the store. It cost me 50 bucks. I've only had it for a couple of months and it's already chipping away at the bottom. It's hard to justify the price and if any other logo was on it, it would absolutely not be worth it. Now for 10 bucks less, you can buy the Light Chaser Pro case by itself and you are going to immediately take a multitude of steps in the right direction in terms of durability and features. It's definitely going to add some bulk, but nowhere near something like an OtterBox. The bulkiest part of the case is to completely protect the bigger camera housing and of course add the functionality for the filters. It has a pretty open bottom which I like because it allows for more accessories to be plugged in. Along both sides of the case you will find those notches if you do buy the hand grip. You can place these pretty much anywhere you want on the phone depending on the size of your hand and comfort level. You can also switch it front and back depending on if you want to use the front or rear facing cameras. Now there's not a world of difference between this year's grip and last year's. The accent color is slightly different, but it seems to be made out of the same materials. It's roughly the same size and weight. The most notable change is they did add a hot shoe. In my opinion, this is a welcomed addition, so now you can more easily add uh, different accessories like microphones or little lights. And they were able to add this without sacrificing one of the quarter 20s, so you still have two of those on either end. Now I did remove the Bluetooth shutter button from last year's model and stick it on here. So one, I can confirm that you can indeed do that. I believe the Bluetooth shutters are the same. It doesn't look any different online, but I don't technically have this year's model, so I'm not 100% certain. You know, music is one of my favorite parts of creating videos. I just love how you can change the entire mood of the video with just some different notes. The only downside is I actually have no idea how to play the piano. It's not even plugged in. Which is why I'm oh so thankful for today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic has a huge library of music and sound effects that you can use in all of your videos, ranging from YouTube, to commercial clients. And the best part is you never have to worry about copyright strikes with their instant verification process. Since I've connected my YouTube channel to my account, it instantly creates a license for me so that no matter what music or sound effects I use, I never have an issue. Now beyond Epidemic's ever growing list of amazing customized playlists for all sorts of various genres and artists of music, one of my favorite features is definitely the fact that you can download the individual stems. Sometimes it's great having the full mix track that you just listen to and just include the whole thing. But sometimes, especially maybe if you're using dialogue, you're not going to want uh, some distracting instrumentals or vocals from a music track, but you really like a couple of the instruments or kind of the basic beat. With stems, just pick and choose what instruments you want to use. Heck, you can mix and mash them together from multiple different songs, blend them together to create your own artistic mix. So no matter what your project is, whether you are trying to fool your audience into thinking you can play beautiful classical piano or working on the next super upbeat Apple ad, Epidemic is there to help you out. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the link in the description. Again, huge thanks to Epidemic for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the video.
And then we have the new filters. Now the design of all the filters are pretty much the same as last year's, however, they are all bigger since the camera housing and all three lenses are significantly larger on the 13 series. And one of the biggest issues I've always had with filters is how do you get them in and out of the case and installed on the lens and taking them off all without getting any fingerprints on them since they're always so little and small. Now, if you've never seen this filter system in action, let me show the genius of the design. All you do is open up the case for the filter that you want to use, and you'll notice the rubber cover on the filter is only covering the top part of the filter. On the other side, you'll see two little notches. Simply line that up on the case, slide down to lock it into place, and then peel the rubber case off. Get your shots, do your thing, and then when you're ready to put it away, simply put the rubber cover back on, slide it up to remove the filter, put it back in the case, and you're good to go. They did introduce a handful of new filters, including some from their FX lineup for their bigger brother DSLR and cinema camera lineup that they also sent over, thank you Polar Pro. So for your custom kits, you can choose from different variable ND filters. They have a three to five stop and a six to nine. They have a CP filter for taking away reflections. They have their new mist filter and even a version of the variable ND filters with mist added in. And then they also did add their blue morphic and gold morphic filters, which if you've never seen those before, essentially give you that kind of really stylized light streak of either blue or gold. If you aim it at a big soft light source like this huge soft box, you're just gonna get a very faint kind of glow around the edge of blue or gold. So if you wanna get that really defined anamorphic type streak, you're gonna wanna use a harsh light source like the sun or a light with a snoot on it. Or I guess probably just a bare bulb by itself would do the trick too. Now in my opinion, all of these filters in their respective use cases look extremely good. I'm not really getting any like bad magenta crazy color shifts like you see in some variable NDs. The mist filter in my opinion is not too strong. Fun fact, I'm actually using the 82 millimeter uh, mist filter on my Pocket 6K right now. And as you can see, it is very subtle. There's a little bit of glow around this light source, but it's not too over the top kind of like my uh, Prism FX, uh, Dream FX filter. That one's pretty strong. This one seems pretty subtle. Now in terms of critiques or bad stuff that I would love to see fixed or changed, I really only have two things for this system. One is the power button on the case or really the buttons in general for volume. They're not terrible, but they take some breaking in. The first couple days of using it, I'm constantly taking screenshots or playing the game of hit the power button, I didn't hit it, now I hit it too hard and now getting Siri on because I think I'm not pressing it hard enough. The buttons are just kind of mushy and I don't know if it's possible with the material that this case is made out of, but if they can get a little bit sharper clickiness, that would make this the greatest, most satisfying case I've ever used. And then the second thing is the fact that the filters are not stackable. Now this does kind of wrap up into kind of my overall summary of who this system is for. As you guys know, I love using B-Script stuff as well. And in fact, we're gonna be checking out some of their new new stuff in a handful of weeks, but they're kind of in two completely different categories. Bscript is kind of, in my opinion, meant for like, hey, I'm a iPhone filmmaker and I have this huge rugged case with maybe big lenses attached to it. This system, in my opinion, is meant for the more everyday carry sort of vibe. And then, oh, I just want to add this one filter in front of my lens. Now they do kind of have that stacked filter solution a little bit with the mist and variable NDs. So if you know you're gonna wanna do that situation, just buy those filters instead of buying them separately. But of course that means that you will always have mist with your variable ND. All in all, I absolutely love how fluid this entire system is. Going from just your phone in a good solid case to adding a hand grip and a filter in the matter of seconds and then all back off again sleekly in your pocket. It's really satisfying to kind of play with and use and I am just a huge fan of what Polar Pro is doing for a very sleek uh, iPhone filmmaker setup. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And of course, all of the items that we talked about in this video are still linked in the description if you wanna check them out.